All right, this probably doesn't mean much to many people, but it certainly means something to someone. So in this box right here, let me open this up. And I've got some packing pillows, Obtanian Gaming Part 2 Volume Rejuvenate Kit. Okay. Can anyone guess what this might be? Vectrax Buzz Off Installation Manual. So let me zoom out just a tad. So this is a buzz off kit to remove the buzz from a Vectrex system. Do you not know what a Vectrex is? I almost bought one when they were brand new back in the, I think it was the latish 80s. It is a Vector gaming system. Anyhow, there are some of the instructions for installing this buzz off kit right here. And then it looks like an addendum with a little piece of wire taped to it. Another piece of wire taped here. See the tape there? So they actually went to a little bit of work to get this installed correctly. And then here is the actual buzz off kit. So there is maybe a circuit board in here. I'm not sure, but if you take a look at this, it's got a blue and blue white and then a separate orange wire and then a serial number 345274C Tweety. I think that might be the name that was on the box. Charles Tweety. Yes, that is it. This person must make these kits. So a couple of... Uh, Stop falling down, doggone it. Alcohol prep pads. Desiccant silica gel. Do not eat this. Don't eat it. I mean, it's tempting, but don't eat it. And an addendum for rare models. We'll figure that out as we get a little farther along in this. I'm sure there are several YouTube videos about this kit out there. In fact, I have watched a few of them. So I'm just going to put this stuff back in the box, including the silica gel. We'll box that up for the moment. So the customer did supply a service manual for the Vectrex. And if I can flip through these pages, maybe I'll scan them and post them individually at the end of the video, just in case someone needs these doggone instructions. And they are definitely doggone. Hopefully if you have to pause it, you can read this. but the pages are definitely stuck together. It does include a circuit board layout and a schematic diagram of the complete system, which is really, really cool. Some diagrams, some setup instructions. The checksum B796. Test cartridge. Oh, I wonder if we have that. I doubt it. Parts list. And then um, here is the, the block diagram of the system. Uh, maybe I can zoom in just a tad on that. Then I think we're going to be looking at schematic diagrams. Hopefully, if someone needs a diagram for a Vectrex, this will help. Try to get it zoomed in and centered for you. Look at that, they're using LM555 as the oscillator, I see. 
and then a little bit more this is the digital portion the actual gaming portion of the unit right there yeah I might try to scan those in and then packaging okay well that is the service manual so let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video there's the cord and let me get this situated right here I'm gonna have to flip it up so you can actually take a look at it get the cord out from underneath it here oh way too big zoom out well, there it is, the Vectrex arcade system, GCE. Uh, this is a vector monitor, only a black and white monitor. And I did have a vector game. I had a uh, Asteroids cocktail game back in the late 80s and early 90s. When I was much younger, I still have a couple of video games. Uh, one of the uh, trivia games that you see in a bar, and I do have a cocktail version of Donkey Kong that is fully operational. I wonder if there is some kind of a date code on this. Really focus. Made in Hong Kong. This is not a toy as it, and is intended for use by or under the supervision of an adult. Well, <laughs> Okay, 1982. Wow, I thought it was later than that. My bad. Anyhow, uh, the customer brought this over and wants the buzz off kit to be installed. So I guess I need to power this thing on first and foremost and make sure that it actually works because I don't want to get into a situation where I did all this work and it does not even power up at all. So. How do you turn this thing on? I know this little flip up door opens, but I have it at a weird angle, so it may not. There, it did. So there is the uh, Vectrex controller. One, two, three, four, and a joystick. I doubt that it's a potentiometer, probably just a contact switch, most likely. And then down here is reset and then on off volume and it does appear that this joystick does actually plug in there okay plugged in let's power this thing on see if it lights up so I'll get the screen pretty much in view right there and get some of this crud out of the way all right, AC power has been applied. Oh, and it's buzzing, yes. So you cannot see that. It, it's not really uh, flickering other than on the camera just because of the frame rate of the camera. Wow, that looks really, really good. I cannot believe how good this thing looks for being, what was it, 82? So, oh my God, 40 plus years old? Uh, let me see if I can switch to a uh, slow shutter speed on the camera. One moment. Does it have sound? Yeah, the pot's dirty. Going to need some deoxid. One moment. Well, unfortunately, with the slow shutter, it didn't really help much. It's still flickering, but on the screen, it looks absolutely perfectly. Um, no flicker, no nothing. It's just the camera uh, shutter. I wonder if I shut the lights off. And nope, not going to help stuff at all. Well, it's definitely buzzing, as you can hear. And... Let me move the mic. And as the scene changes, you can actually hear the the buzz change. Uh, this is not a standard cathode ray tube monitor. It is a vector display. So what it actually does is it draws each line 
and then it moves to there, turns the pixel on, moves to there, turns the pixel on, turns the pixel on. So it's what's called a vector display instead of just scanning, 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 scanning. It's actually drawing each individual line with a horizontal and vertical amplifier instead of just one field, one field, one field. So pretty interesting. I remember, uh, like I said, Tempest games use this in color. And previous to that, Asteroids use a vector display as well. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get the back off this thing and see what it looks like inside. Get the mic clipped onto my shirt here. One moment. Okay, I have all the screws out of the back and I must commend this company for using machine thread screws. So I hope I see a brass or stainless insert into the plastic. And I'm gonna go ahead and put those in my egg crate container to organize them. And let's see if we can get this back to come off peacefully. And man, this thing is heavy. Oh my gosh. And first thing I notice is somebody's been in here. That wire right there has been pinched. And it does go through a ferret bead, but still it has been pinched. Man, look at this thing. Samsung CRT. I thought it was a Sanyo for a minute. Looks like it's got pretty low hours on it. Look at the size of the heat sink on that controller board over there. Wow. So the customer did indicate they wanted me to uh, go ahead and possibly recap or check all the capacitors in this unit, which I can certainly do quite easily. I wonder if we stand this thing up. Does this, that's the CRT driver board of the vector driver. I wonder if this board actually comes out in some fashion. Oh, yep, I see uh, a couple of screws down here. So we go ahead and remove those screws and then I can lay this board up and down right and left and ESR all of the capacitors on this board before we do any work to it. GCE, okay. Not quite sure what that stands for, but we'll go with that. One moment. All right, so I went ahead and printed out the one page that shows all of the capacitors and I mirrored image those on the back so that I have a reference to go by as I'm looking at these capacitors. 47 at 16, 47 at 25, 220 at 16, and so forth and so on. So let's break out the blue ESR meter and ESR all of these capacitors on the deflection portion of the board, which I have completely removed right here. So we'll go ahead and do that before we do much else. One moment. All right, power on, lead shorted, zeroed out. So we'll start with that 47 at 16. I see 0.37 ohms, that is excellent. 47 at 25. 1.1 1 .1 ohms, just, just a hair high. 220 at 16. 0.16, that is excellent. 1000 at 25. Wow, 0.01, 0 0.02, that thing is perfect. Another 1000 at 25.01, perfect. 4,700 at 25, wow, 0.02, I'm pretty happy with that, 0 0.02, 0 0.01. Another 4,700 at 25, 0.02, I'm very good with that. This is a 47 at 100, 0.26, that is very good. Another, let's see, that's 33 at 350. 3.6 ohms, that's probably okay. Not too terribly bad. And then on to a 47 at 100. 0.24, I'm perfectly fine. Now these are both 22s. 
at 16, point zero 0.05 and point zero 0.05. This is a 1000 at 25 volts and point zero 0.06. Wow, all those are, wow, excellent condition. This is a 1000 at 25 volts, point zero 0.07. Another 1000 at 25 volts, point zero 0.07, point zero 0.06. Over here, a 220 at 25 volts, 0.21 ohms. That is perfect. This is a 10 at 25 volts. Uh, 3 ohms, maybe marginal, maybe. Probably not that important. 470 at 16 at 0.22 ohms. I'm good with that. This is a 47 at 16. 0.37 ohms, perfect. And a 47 at 16 down here in the corner at 0.35 ohms. Well, the only capacitor I thought was this one, which is the 47 at 25 that measures one ohm. That one I might want to replace. I'd like to see about a half an ohm on that, but one ohm is not the end of the world. And then we had the, what was the other one over here? The 47 at 16, was that it? No, 0.4, that's good. Maybe it was the 10, 3.2, yeah. That would be the only other one that I would think possibly about replacing, but none of these things are at the end of the world circumstance. They all check pretty good. And I uh, don't have any caps on the CRT drive board, so that is excellent. But man, for the age of this thing, 1982, and there's only basically two caps that might need replacement. This thing is in pristine condition. So next I'm going to move on to the CPU board and it probably has three caps on it. Maybe that's it. Okay. One moment. So I went ahead and grabbed another 47 at 25 to replace this one that measures 1.0 ohms. And I will show you what the new one measures. 1.1 ohms. So yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone. So the other cap in question was this 10 at 25 volts right here. It does measure 3.0 ohms. And then this is the replacement for it. And it measures 0.5 ohms. So that's probably going to be the only capacitor I'm going to recommend for replacement on this board because every other cap, like I said, checks perfect for what is this? 40 years old at this point? Yeah, 42 years old. And every cap is perfect in this thing. They just don't make them like they used to, obviously. Well, let's go ahead and replace that 110 microfarad capacitor. And hopefully it's actually a 10 on the board. See what it has to say here. It's a Jamicon. It's a 10 at 25. And I'm going to re be replacing it with another 10 at 25. This is a Kimmet. Now, I do remember the negative was up and it is silk screened correctly. We'll just fold those over and let them live there for a moment. I can get my solder unspooled. There we go. And I always like to stand up the leads so there's no tension on them. There we go. And if you can see the ESR meter, we'll go ahead and give it a check again. Make sure the leads are zeroed. And yes, they are. 
and we measure 0.38 ohms, 0.39. So measuring the original cap right here, you can see the display hopefully. Uh, 2.6, 2.5, that's because it was warm. I just soldered on it or unsoldered it as the case may be. Okay, well, basically that's the only cap that I would recommend replacing on this board because like I said, they don't make them like they used to. Okay, on to the CPU board or the game board or whatever you want to call it board. Okay, I have the deflection board installed. So I'm gonna to try to flip this up. And as you can see, there are only three capacitors on this board that I really need to be concerned with. There's some uh, metal film caps over here, but mainly I am interested in electrolytic caps. So I do have them marked right there. And I do have a layout of the board printed out. So as I turn this thing upside down, that should be those three caps right there. So let's get the ESR meter out, check those caps and see what they have to say. Let's see, I'll put that down there. Turn it on, short the leads, and zero. Okay, so the first capacitor I'm gonna check is going to be a 100 at 16. And it reads, my hand is in the way again, really? There you go. If I can keep on it. 0.19 ohms, I'm perfectly fine with that. The next one is another 100 at 16 and I get 0.5 ohms on that one. Maybe a hair high in my book. And this is a 220 at 16, and I see 0.11 ohms. I am perfectly fine with that. One moment while I grab a new 100 at 16 and test it. All right, so this is a, I believe a Kemet. Yes, Kemet 100 at 16. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. So I'm just gonna short the leads one more time. 0, 0 0.00, and this one does read 0.4 ohms, so it's not that much better than the one that is in there currently. So I think I'm just gonna leave the one in there because like I said previously, they don't make them like they used to. Okay, well let's get started on the actual buzz off installation at this point. So the first thing it wants you to do is remove this ground wire, which I did previously have off. And it states that it is not necessary for replacement. It was just there to meet FCC part 15 compliance. So hopefully it will cooperate. It did come off quite easily the other day. So I'm just gonna remove it and delete it because he says it is not needed. The rest of it, I'm just gonna speed up. Okay, so I think to be safe, because these wires are basically soldered on both sides, this one's got a crimp on it, factory crimp. I'm just gonna go ahead and unsolder the two reds and the white from the board over here, just remembering that the white is the center tap connection. And that way I can lay this down and do the work on it without having to worry about it pulling on the board and necking the CRT. Okay, now the logic board is separated from the Vectrex. All right, back to installation. I'll try to zoom this in and I'll try to keep it in frame. It looks like it's gonna be pretty simple. Just uh, soldering two wires here, 
slicing that jumper and then over to I believe that spot just above the nine or that end of that resistor that's the five volt power supply they want you to attach that little orange lead to Well, I did mess up just a little bit on that one. Slice the trace. I didn't have to slice because this one does not have the rare soldered in sound chip right there. Um, I routed the wires. I zip tied them to one of the five volt lines. It should be uh, fairly quiet since that's where we get the uh, power right here. I do believe this module is simply an audio amplifier. It probably has a little surface mount. Uh, what is it? LM, LM3, 386? I can't remember, but a little surface mount, probably a couple caps. Yeah, it just sets up a little audio amplifier circuit. I have to commend the guy. Whoever built this did an extremely good job. Uh, not just the Vectrex kit, but also the entire Vectrex with uh, threaded inserts into the plastic and thick plastic. This is not, this is not thin. This is an eighth of an inch thick. Um, and so this guy who manufactured this just used twisted pair of wire basically uh, for audio cable. And I think that's all they're doing. They're feeding audio from the sound chip, picking it off here, sending it in here. Since we have ground, all we need is power, which is five volts, to supply this little audio amplifier inside this little module. Um, yeah, that's about it. Like I said, I didn't read the instructions completely. But should be all good now. Let's go ahead and plug the speaker into it. And I think I might try to uh, get creative on the speaker wire if I can. If it'll reach at this point. Yeah, perfect. That way it's tied up and it's out of the way. Okay, let's put this thing back together and try it out.
Okay, well I got it sitting here on the bench. Um, I did pull the volume knob off before I removed the chassis, so don't anyone scream about that. And I did just reattach the volume knob. Okay, let's apply AC power and see what is going to happen. Power on. And from what I can tell, it sounds much better. Let's get the audio. Turn it up just a little bit. And yes, it does sound better. I think I must have bumped the brightness knob because I see that little dot in the center of the screen. So, find it here. And I want to dial it down until it just disappears. This is accessible from the back of the unit also. Once again, it's the camera that's making it flicker. You don't really notice it in real life because the human eye can't really pick up that high of a shutter speed. But everything is working great. I'm gonna throw the back on it. It sounds great. Just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of noise. But it's something I'm not even concerned about and I think the customer is going to be extremely happy with this. Got the old capacitor taped up on the top there. I just gotta throw the back on it and we'll give it a final test. Okay, here we go, power on. The back has been applied. And we do get sound. So I do have the controller here. I just wonder how to start this game. I'll just hit a button. I'll move the joystick and we'll see what it does. Okay, that rotates it. That must be hyperspace. Okay, that shoots. Okay, so it must be a lot like Asteroids, just a knockoff. I lost myself. Man, it, when you press the go button, it goes. Anyhow, I'm pretty happy about the repair on this, or the upgrade, I should see, I should say. Um, yeah, let's turn the lights off. And just as a little extra bonus feature, I will turn up the brightness and you'll actually be able to see the retrace line. So normally you don't get to see that when, uh, when the brightness is down because it basically eliminates that. So you can actually see the beam moving out, painting the dot, coming back, moving out, painting the dot, coming way over here to something. I don't know what's going on way over there, but. Anyhow, that is how the vector system operates. So let's turn it back down until the dot just goes out in the center of the picture. And uh, yeah. Picture tube, crystal clear on this thing. Unbelievable for a video game system made in 1982. And I did verify uh, the date on a lot of the chips. Oh, it's even better if I block the light. Let me turn off the light. I did verify the date on a bunch of the chips and it was midway through 1982 when this unit was produced. So there you go. Anyhow, that is it. The Vectrex Buzz Off installation kit. I should have honestly done a before and after comparison with the sound, um, but I'm at the same distance I was last time I started this unit up and it was buzzing pretty loud and now it's nice and quiet. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching this. Uh, incidentally, that little blue dot right there, that is the light on the microphone. I can block it with my thumb, the wireless mic receiver. Anyhow, I certainly hope you enjoyed the uh, Vectrex buzz off sound installation. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, if you could please hit that subscribe button and like this video. It does help my channel grow. 
You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Um, it's, it's close right now between the Gmail and um, like a YouTube comment, which one I would answer fast. I'm trying to get caught up. Stuff's been here way, way too long again. If I have a unit of yours and I haven't got back to it, I certainly apologize. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye. All right, so the first cap we're going to check is going to be a 100 at 16. And I get 0 0.19, 0 0.2. That is perfectly fine. The next one is another 100 at 16. And I get half an ohm 
that is, in my estimation, very marginal. This is a 220 at 16, and I get point. Oh, my hand's been in the way the whole time. All right, let's take that again. All right, take two with hands not in the way. And I did just re ahead. And I did just re.